Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fence Bros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. Find me on Twitter at DanHarris80. It is Friday. It is time to talk about every matchup from this weekend. But first, as we do every Friday, let's welcome in Dr. David Chow from ProFootballDoc.com. Find him on Twitter at ProFootballDoc. Doc, thank you. Busy day for you. Thank you for finding time for us. Oh, always, Dan. Like I said, I always enjoyed talking to you. So you might have to catch me up if there is any breaking news from the morning. I just got out of surgery. Not too much, but I will let you know. Uh, Dak Prescott, let's start with him because that's the one that fantasy managers want to know. And it's a Sunday night game to add further intrigue to it. So he had the calf injury before the bye. Then he had the bye. He was practicing. And then there were all these sound bites like, I'm optimistic I can play. It's not fully my decision. <laughs> then there was some pessimism, pessimism a little bit earlier today. He's questionable, Doc. Hopefully we'll find out tomorrow. So again, you saw the injury when it happened at the end of that game back in week six. What's your outlook on Dak Prescott? Medically speaking, I am very, very confident that he could play. The question is that he could be cleared to play and would play. But the question is, will he? And we made a video this morning that's on the Pro Football Doc YouTube channel, other things, the Twitter timeline, of the process that teams go through. And I've gone through it before, not for Dak specifically, but with the then San Diego Chargers, how do you make this decision? Big picture, et cetera. And there has to be universal agreement, and we've talked about this, between medical has to say yes, the player has to say, yeah, I feel comfortable, let's go, and then the team has to say yes. I think medical will be okay. They may blame medical and say they didn't They didn't say okay, but the reality is I think medically he could play. And Dak has said it. If this were the playoffs, I'm playing. Right. But it's not the playoffs. And the Cowboys are five and one. The rest of the division is two and five. I get it. It's only the quote second quarter, right? You can't be scoreboard watching yet. But let me tell you, if he plays this week and he aggravates it and he misses three or four games and the lead evaporates, everyone will be kicking themselves. Because of that, because of the situation that they're in, I lean towards, actually, I'm fairly strong that I think they will use discretion as the better part of Valor and not play Dak this week. And this is just reading the tea leaves like we've done many times. Sure. He could play, absolutely. I believe he could play. And to me, the death knell was, look, if everything goes went smoothly all the way up until that launch practice he talked about on Saturday morning before they leave for Minnesota, he might have. But the fact that word came that when he ramped up, he was more sore. That's not a setback, but that's a yellow light warning signal. And I think the Cowboys will heed it and say no. Now, they probably will say that medical said no because of the risk of re-injury. They're not going to say Dak wasn't confident and didn't want to go. And, you know, unless Jerry speaks up, and he might, I mean, they're not going to say coaching decision because that doesn't send the right message. You're asking Trayvon Diggs to play through his ankle and Amari Cooper mm-hmm. to play through his and this. So it's not the right messaging. But that's what I think is going to happen. He's going to be out and it's going to get blamed on medical, even though he could go. And let's let's face it. If you're a cornerback and you have a calf, that's a much bigger deal. Ezekiel Elliott with a calf is a bigger deal. Yep. Amari Cooper with a calf is a bigger deal. And this year, let's face it, Dak hasn't been running the ball much. Yeah, he's mobile in the pocket. He's looked better and better. And it's a good thing, right? It preserves him. And I think he could play through. My joke is, and I said it the other day to the staff that's here, I said, Dak Prescott in a boot is more mobile than my friend Philip Rivers. Okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, so he could do it, but it's the risk of getting worse. And I think they actually will not play him this week. If that helps your fantasy managers with the Sunday night game as well. Yeah. Hopefully they'll make the decision on Saturday, which is what they have suggested. They might be able to give more information. So fingers crossed there, you know, we're talking doc about somebody who's coming back from an injury and then has soreness and whether or not that's a red flag. Let me ask you about somebody else. You may have not seen this because it's recent is Jerry Judy who, was the plan was for him to play this week and come off IR after, you know, missing time uh, with the ankle injury. But apparently he did report some soreness in the ankle and they held Mm -hmm. him out of practice today and he is going to be questionable for the game. Vic Fangio still expressed optimism, but that really was my question, Doc, especially with someone like Judy who had that ankle injury. When they come back 
and then they experience soreness like this. Is that a red flag for you with regards to Judy? It is if it, it's a muscle injury. It isn't necessarily when it involves a ligament and, you know, the ankle was immobilized, et cetera. So is it caution? Sure. If it were a hamstring and we saw this, I'd say he's not going. It's not. It's his ankle. So it remains to be seen. Uh, you can't know for sure. And thank you for telling me that. I didn't know the latest news. Yeah, it just but, came out, Doc, right before we started recording. And, and and really, I said all along from the week one injury that, you know, with a little luck on our side, that, you know, he's going to return to play in, in late October. And this is October 31st game, right? And yep. so I, this might be reacclimation, soreness, stiffness, like he hasn't done that in a while. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. And barring trauma, you shouldn't be able to re-aggravate it. Unlike Dak, you know, one misstep, one acceleration, and you aggravate it. This is, you have to take the same hit. So that's why there's a better odds of Judy going than Dak. That's what I figured, Doc. That's why I wanted to make the distinction because of the soreness and the different type of injuries, obviously, that we're dealing with. Let's go to the Giants here, Doc. And everybody's been kind of injured. So the practice reports from today was Kadarius Tony did return to practice. I actually haven't seen if it was limited or if it was full yet, but I know he was at practice. Based on what you saw with the ankle injury, do you think the timeline that you expected from them would allow Judy to play here on Monday? Uh, not, I'm sorry, Kadarius Tony to play here on Monday night. I think that it's a close call for playing, and I think in normal circumstances he probably wouldn't. But what does the rest of the Giants' receiving core look like? Right? Does he get pressed into service? Like you know, in a normal situation, 85% Tony maybe wait a week, mm -hmm. but. In this situation, 85% Tony might be as good as they have in terms of their other options. And, you know, it's a, uh, and, and, and don't sleep on this. Players know when it's a single game, when it's a mm -hmm. nationally televised game. Sure. So, uh, not that they won't play hard otherwise, but they don't want to miss these big opportunities. And so we'll see what happens. So with Saquon Barkley, he apparently did not practice again today. So again, based on what you saw when he injured his ankle, this is what, three weeks, I believe, since then? I mean, do we expect this to be around the time that he's supposed to be able to come back? Or would you expect probably for him now, especially with not practicing, to be out at least another week? Well, from the get-go, we knew that he was going to miss two games at least. And here comes the third. Of mm -hmm. course, then you say, well, why didn't the Giants put him on injured reserve? And the question is, they could have. Maybe they didn't need the roster spot. But how do you project two, three weeks down the road where your number one guy is going to be? You want to leave the door open for him. Uh, right. I, I, look, I think he's close. I don't think he's making it this week, but I think he's close. Good enough for me. Uh, let's talk briefly about Baker Mayfield, who is off the injury report, Doc. And he is going to play right now this weekend against the Steelers. My question to you, and we've talked about Mayfield in the past, but... The basic question is, with the injury to his left shoulder, as bad as it might be, do you think that affects his accuracy and his ability to perform as a quarterback generally? Well, look, indirectly, it very well may. Directly, it shouldn't. I know Dan Orlovsky's talked, talked a lot about Baker's footwork not being very good recently. Maybe that's to the shoulder. I can't talk about that. Dan can't, right? But mm -hmm. you got to remember, his first dislocation was week two. He came back that same game, went 10 for 10, over 100 yards, passed for a touchdown, and ran for a touchdown after he came back. Week three was pretty good. Now, week four was a drop-off, and then week six he was re-injured, re admittedly worse. And we talked about it last week. I get it's a fracture, but the fracture doesn't need to heal, right? And uh, he's cleared here. It's a matter of cuff strength, and he has it. And so I don't see it having a huge effect, but I can't speak to how it, you know, one injury throws off your footwork. But I, I think that, you know, he should be healthy and good to go. And hopefully he'll have that brace on a little bit tighter where it limits his range of motion on that left shoulder. No video here with this one, Doc, but Austin Eckler again did not practice with his hip injury. He's listed as questionable, but this is off a bye. Doc, and suddenly he's up with a hip injury. Just again, as a as a, a doctor, used to be with the team. What does that say to you? <laughs> well, 
I always say when things don't make sense from the outside, and I'm on the outside, I'm not inside the walls. Sure. It makes sense from the inside. We just don't know what's going on right now from the outside. And um, this doesn't make sense. And I don't ever pretend. I think you know me well enough. If I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to lie about it. And you're right. He's coming off a bye. We did look at video and we didn't see anything with the hip. And Dan, you probably know this too. He was full practice on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He wasn't DNP Wednesday. He wasn't limited practice. Maybe he got hurt in practice. He was full practice. And now two DNPs in a row. Like, hard to interpret that. There's no yeah. video. It's very hard to interpret that at all. So, you know, this one, I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't want to okay. mislead you, but flip a coin. I, I don't know what to make of this. That's good enough to know, Doc. Like, honestly, the fact that you don't know makes me feel more comfortable that I don't know <laughs> as well. Very quickly, before I let you go, last night's game, we saw a couple of injuries. I just want to get your understanding. They've got 10 days till the next game. You saw Kyler Murray at the end of the game there hurt his ankle late. He was reportedly in a walking boot with 10 days, Doc, based on what you saw. Do you expect him to be able to play next week? I do. Okay. The question is, is it 98% Kyler Murray mobility or 92% or 85. I do expect him to play next week. Look, his foot wasn't planted. So I called it more of an E version sprain than a high ankle sprain, um, you know, on that one first down or not first down, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I don't think it's significant, but a boot is just normal as a precaution to go home in and see how much swelling there is. And yes, the extra three days will be helpful and we'll see, but I'm not overly concerned about Kyler, but then again, a good part of his game is the mobility. So right. that's something to watch. All right, last one, DeAndre Hopkins, Doc. What I always do before I'm making any of my lineup decisions is I check the six score over at profootballdoc.com. It was low on DeAndre Hopkins. It was not encouraging for me. And again, he was in and out yesterday with that hamstring injury. So. Look, he came back a little bit, oddly enough. But I mean, do you think this is something that he's going to be okay to play in 10 days? Look, it remains to be determined. And I don't love it. Okay. If it was a normal seven day cycle, I would say no. 10 days, fingers crossed. Here's the thing yes, we thought he would play. If we didn't think he would play, the six score would have been like, 12 right 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 and and it's a rough estimate estimation if he's supposed to get 18 fantasy points you know under 50 is is under half of that we set him at 47 thinking he was going to play but even if he did how productive and chance of aggravation who would have known the very first long bomb play that he completed he pulled up and, and felt his hamstring now as i tweeted in saying look you know the second half don't think he's coming back on the whole deal he pops back into play and, and catches the ball. But after the game, it's been determined that he went rogue. The <laughs> Cliff Clingsbury said he just ran into the game. <laughs> you know, yeah. I guess that's what happens when you don't take his uniform off or take his helmet or wrap him in ice or 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 something. But he just checked himself back into the game and and you know what the other wide receivers let him. I mean, so yeah. I, I actually thought it was kind of humorous. So he obviously wants to go, but because of that, I think sometimes teams then say, not in a bad way, that in terms of, don't get me wrong, don't trust the guy. Not like we don't believe in the guy, but don't trust that he'll be honest with his hamstring situation, right? If he's mm -hmm. clearly told to stay out and he keeps coming back in, you know that's the kind of guy who's going to say, I feel fine, I feel nothing, when he really right. feels something. So that's where, if you ask me this moment, even with 10 days, I would lean towards not playing next week, but we got a lot of time to figure it out. Sure. He is Dr. David Chow. Find him at Pro Football Doc on Twitter and go to his site, profootballdoc.com. Check the six scores. It will make you feel a lot more confident about the health or not as confident about the health of any given player. Doc, thanks so much for fitting us in. I'll talk to you again next week, okay? Thank you, Dan. All right. And now we're going to get to Dan and Kyle in the morning and break down each and every game for this weekend. All right, guys, it's time for Dan and Kyle in the morning. I have a very, very caffeinated friend here with me today. <laughs> Kyle Yates, Yates uh, you are dying inside, but you have enough caffeine that I, I think if they, you know, if they cut you open right now, just it would just be coffee and caffeine that uh, fell out. So are you ready to rock the house today on our podcast? It's pretty much that. Uh, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, I was making my second cup of coffee for the morning uh, when my wife, who was dropping off my son at daycare, texted me that she was bringing back a drink for me. So I have currently sitting right next to me, I have my cappuccino that I made. Uh, with two shots of espresso and then I have a pumpkin cream cold brew from Starbucks Which I just showed on the YouTube channel So if my energy levels take off halfway through this podcast and I start talking at lightning speed You know why it will be great because apparently I talk at lightning speed all you the do time talk at lightning per, speed. I, I don't I don't know that's just how I am. So uh, if you do go crazy, I will try to pull it back a little people, bit and people who listen to the podcast on like two times speed are going to be like this is too much this is too much i have what's, to put it on 0.5 <laughs> what's funny is i do listen to all podcasts at one and a half speed i can't do it i can't do that really no i, I do, do it but for me when i listen to myself which is rare because you, i just don't like to do that um it's like i'm speaking at three times speed and i always <laughs> think i've messed something up but then everybody else sounds normal it's weird. I will work on that going forward. But yes, before we get into it, uh, can we can we break the news to our, our listeners about, uh, you know, what they can expect here going forward for a couple of weeks? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so this next Monday, uh, I will be out on paternity leave moving forward. So we are welcoming our second child uh, into the world with a scheduled C-section on Monday. So we will uh, I will be out for the next two weeks. So you guys will have to listen to Dan do this Friday show by himself, apparently. It will be Dan and Dan in the morning, and it will just be an hour long. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, okay? I'm still recovering from the fact you that You need to, to like, this. splice it together where you do, like, you'll answer or you'll ask a question, and then you'll, like, talk in an accent or something like that and answer yeah. the question. I have many accents ready to go, so I, Great I may podcasting. do that. It'll be fantastic. Everybody will love it. In the meantime, let's do this podcast because we don't have that many teams on by, so I will have to speak at ludicrous speed. Uh, but before we get into all of the games, let's remind you about a couple of housekeeping things. First, the signed Jefferson, uh, Justin Jefferson helmet that we are giving away. That giveaway ends on Halloween night. That is the last time that you can enter at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you get your entries in. All you have to do is leave a review for the show on Apple Podcasts or CastBox. And then go to fantasypros.com slash contest. That's it. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's three times the entries. So that is a great idea. It is also a great idea just to subscribe to the YouTube channel anyway at youtube.com slash fantasy pros. We are videoing every single podcast, including this one, which you can go check out. We are doing Sunday morning start sit live streams from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right up until game time. We do waiver wire and start sit live streams throughout the week. We do trade videos. We do waiver wire videos. There's a lot of great content out there. We are approaching 130,000 subscribers there. You can get notified whenever we go live. A great thing. Again, it's youtube.com slash fantasy pros, and you can get a ton of fantasy advice. And by the way, three times the entries into the contest for the Justin Jefferson signed helmet. Yates, over under challenge. You know what the deal is. It is sponsored by Caesars, fantasypros.com slash challenge, completely free to play. 10 fantasy point over unders. Grand prize at the end of the year, two nights stay at Caesars Las Vegas Resort. Plus airfare. Again, fantasypros.com slash challenge. Yates, Dak Prescott, although there are some question marks about whether yep. he's going to play at Minnesota, 22.6 fantasy points. Yeah, I was just going to ask. I was like, uh, is he going to play? Uh, <laughs> if he does, I think that uh, I think that he hits the over on this. I, I The injury kind of scares me, but this game could easily turn into a shootout if we do have Dak Prescott at quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, pretty high total Sunday night game. Uh, I will go over as well if he plays. Joe Burrow at the Jets, 20.2. This is interesting because I think we could easily see Joe Burrow throw for, what, 250 and three touchdowns? Sure. Uh, but then there's also the potential that he, you know, the touchdowns go to the running backs and then they just lean on the run game uh, in the second half. So I will still take the over here. I think that we got a solid game here for Joe Burrow incoming, but uh, I just don't know if he has the type of upside with like a Dak Prescott, a Kirk Cousins, where they're going to be going back and forth all game, assuming that Dak plays. So I will take the over, but it is by the slightest margin. Yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, ranking him particularly high this week. He's certainly a starter, as he is every week at this point. But yeah, I agree. I'll go over, but I'm not expecting the massive game here because they're 10 and a half point favorites at this point. Najee Harris against Cleveland, 15.4 fantasy points. I think at this point with the workload for Najee Harris, you got to take the over here. Yep. It's not a great matchup, but still, I think uh, that he is going to go over. Jonathan Taylor against Tennessee, 16.7. Yeah, that's a high line. Uh, I will take the under here slightly because I think he has to find the end zone to be able to hit that, like to hit the over here. So I will lean under, but it's still going to be a solid play. How about Kenneth Gainwell at Detroit? 11 fantasy points even. 
Ooh, uh, I think I will take the under here slightly. Again, I think he's got to find the end zone. I'm projecting an uptick in work here for Kenneth Gainwell, but not to the point where I think he's a solid, solid play where he's going to easily hit the over on 11 points. So I will take the under. I am too. It's uh, I'm a little worried, you know, again, who knows? Maybe we'll see Jordan Howard get 11 carries in this game, and that will just mm -hmm. ruin everything. Jamar Chase against the Jets doesn't really matter what it, it is, but matter. it's 16.8. We are taking the over. Robert Woods at Houston, 12.7 uh, fantasy points. Great matchup. Again, you, I think you got to take the over here. Yeah, I think this is uh, a, the good Robert Woods game here on this one. Justin Jefferson against Dallas, 16.5. Uh, I'll take the over, but uh, again, this could we could see it hit the under if Dak Prescott doesn't play, uh, where you know Minnesota can just lean on their run game or whatever. So I will, uh, I'll still take the over here, bet on Dak Prescott playing and just Jefferson's talent. How about Keenan Allen against the Pats, thirteen point two? Ooh, uh, good line. Uh, I think I will take the under here slightly. Yeah, I will too. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game. We'll talk about it when we get there. But I'm going to go under. Finally, Dallas Goddard uh, at Detroit, nine point six. I've got Goddard very high in my rankings this week. I yeah. think Jalen Hurts. If Jalen Hurts doesn't get it done here as a passer, then we have to be extremely concerned against Detroit. So I will take the over. I agree. I have Goddard as my third ranked tight end, which we can get to when we get to that game. But yes, 9.6, I will go over. All right, Friday morning, as you guys know, we don't have the practice reports. We will try to give you some caveats before we do. Let us talk about last night. Crazy, crazy game. The ending was just fantastic. Packers 24, Cardinals 21. Let's break it down, though. Let's start with the Packers. Very difficult to analyze this as a normal game yeah it's just because right. of the lack of pass catchers but let's talk about the running backs at least aaron jones here 15 for 59 with the touchdown on the ground plus 11 targets seven catches 51 yards through the air he obviously had that touchdown late that he was you know ultimately reversed there aj Dillon looks great here by the way the whole game he ran really hard he you know broke through a lot of contact 16 for 78 in the ground Several good runs. Yates, both you and I sort of listed Aaron Jones as kind of a sell high to an extent, right? It was just sort of the consensus rest of season rankings had him at six. We were more like eight and stuff like that. How do you feel about him? Does this game change your opinion in any way? No, because, I mean, you look at 11 targets, that's great, but where else was the ball going to go? You know, Green Bay's offensive strategy was short passing game, right? Get the ball out in the flats, the sh on slants, get the ball into the hands of the running backs, and uh, because you didn't have Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. So, at that point, it was you, the ball was going to go to Aaron Jones, regardless. So, I think, moving forward, he's just one of these guys that... I think you just continue to hold as a top tier running back in that mid range RB one territory, because we do have to be concerned about in a normal week, the workload for AJ Dillon and how much he is factoring into this backfield. Uh, last week against, was it Washington they played where it was just a weird game. Like they did not run the ball whatsoever. So we had started to talk about AJ Dillon moving up into that flex worthy consideration each week. And then last week it all, all came tumbling down. But I do think that moving forward, we're going to see Green Bay continue to commit to their run game. And uh, that means AJ Dillon's uh, going to be rising back up rest of the season rankings for me. I'm in agreement with this. Uh, again, I want to make it clear. I'm not telling you you have to sell Aaron Jones whatsoever. Aaron Jones is going to be an RB1 rest of season, but I think he's closer to like a back end RB1 a little bit. I mean, even his 15 carries for 59 yards on the ground, a lot of that came late. Like he did not gain a ton of yardage early on on the ground. And Dylan looked great. And Dylan had averaged 13 carries uh, per game from weeks right. four through six. It was just a weird game last week. And what you saw in this game gave you absolutely nobody can watch this game and say, you know what? We need to give A.J. Dillon fewer carries at this point because he ran really well. So, again, great game for Jones. Good to see again in a game that everybody wanted to start him again. But I agree. For the most part, my takeaway is I like what I saw from A.J. Dillon, and I'm probably going to push him up a little bit. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers is passable, 22 of 37, 184 yards. Two touchdowns. Both touchdowns go to Randall Cobb, but just three catches for 15 yards. That's efficiency, um, baby. <laughs> can we ignore basically everything we saw here from the past yes, game? Yes, absolutely. Okay, 100%. very good. And Robert Tunyon suffers what is probably yeah. a season-ending injury, unfortunately, and you know had the big catch, three for 49. But uh, you know we'll we'll deal with that obviously uh, going forward. For the Cardinals, uh, good night for the running backs. Chase Edmonds, seven for 30 on the ground. Finally gets into the end zone there early on. Three for 39 through the air. James Conner, again, uh, five carries, 22 <laughs> yards, 
Two uh, touchdowns. That's efficiency, baby. Well, I, can, we, can we continue? I mean, is this just what we're going to have? James Conner scoring a, a thousand touchdowns? I mean, can you reliably start him going forward? It's, it's so funny. Each week in the primer, I write up James Conner, and I keep happening to get the uh, Arizona Cardinals games. Just it happens uh, when Pat and I are splitting these up. Uh, and each week, I say James Conner is a game script dependent running back, but how many you know game scripts are, are Arizona going to be in where they're playing from behind? And we saw that a little bit here. But if we are not seeing Kyler Murray as involved around the goal line as a runner and I mean even I mean as a runner in general they're leaning on James Conner in the red zone so he is a completely touchdown dependent option but this offense is cooking and uh, James Conner is going to continue to get looks it's crazy uh but yeah I agree I think you've really got to just keep throwing him out there uh at this point meanwhile uh DeAndre Hopkins has that big catch early he loses a touchdown on a face mask or oh, all he had to do was keep his palm just open keep the palm open palm open yeah that was rough but then again he aggravates the hamstring injury weird he's in and out of that game and i read somewhere that uh cliff kings was like he just went in on his own like we we didn't expect him to go back into the game so a little weird just two catches for 66 yards obviously they've got 10 days talk to dr chow about it there meanwhile everybody else is fine but nobody else really goes nuts aj green eight targets five catches 50 yards and a bizarre end of game thing where he doesn't understand Dude, turn turn around do we know what was happening by the way on that i have end? no idea all i right. have no idea all right i i guess he thought it was a rollout from, uh, i uh, i've got nothing for you christian kirk six targets four catches 46 yards obviously both these guys kind of only added on at the end they were very quiet throughout uh zach Ertz, four for 42 rondell moore Three for 24. He he fumbled the punt when he you know tried to avoid it. Yeah. Kyler Murray not great. 274 with two picks. He also hurt his ankle at the end. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, just a bad game kind of for everybody here with Murray. Anything you want to say in the passing game here? This is really interesting moving forward. You know, a, a trend that I've noticed, and it hasn't been every single game, but as far as these Thursday nights, these short turnaround games where we have high expectations, I have Kyler, I had Kyler Murray at QB2 on the week, right? Like it looked like this was a smash bot uh, for Kyler Murray. He's been dominating so far this year. And then we get to Thursday night and it's just wacky, right? I mean, Randall Cobb, two touchdowns on three, <laughs> on three right. catches. Like it's just a wacky game where we cannot comfortably predict what happens. So moving forward, I might be at the point where I just downgrade the Thursday night quarterbacks, you know, just a couple of spots, just kind of take that into account because I just don't know. There's something interesting here on the short week. We try to turn around. Uh, it's just not happening. Uh, I feel generally speaking, Yates, that my my worst ranking is of the Thursday players. Like I, I never have right. a good sense of how the game is going to unfold. I, I don't know why that necessarily is. I mean, I, I faded Aaron Rodgers, I guess, a little bit versus consensus, but that was much more about pass catchers rather than anything to deal right, with exactly. Aaron Rodgers. So yeah, weird game here uh, for sure. But you know, it is what it is. But let's get in. We got a lot of games this weekend. Let's start with the Panthers at the Falcons. Uh, the Panthers offense is ugly right now. Chuba Hubbard really disappointed last week. Where do you have him ranked this week in your running back rankings? Yeah, Chuba Hubbard this week is at RB18 for me. Uh, you look okay. at the matchup here against Atlanta and you say, okay, I should probably be still starting Chuba Hubbard. And I do think that we can see Carolina's offense bounce back a little bit here. But you definitely cannot view him as that high-end RB2, you know, volume play that we thought we had. I mean, I had him inside my top 12 last week, uh, and it just oh, yeah. did not come to fruition because this offense is struggling big time. So I've got him at 18 on the week, still a solid play as a mid-range running back too. Yeah, I'm right there too. I'm 17. I was completely in on Hubbard last week. I'm not running away from him here. I mean, you can exploit certainly the Falcons on the ground. DJ Moore still a wide receiver one for you? He is. He's at uh, wide receiver eight for me. So this is a guy where, depending on your other options, I think you still have to continue to roll out. Now, he is certainly disappointing uh, based on what we thought we had at the beginning of the season versus now uh, over the past few weeks. But he's still he still has yet to like hurt your lineup. And there's still value in that with his upside, especially in this matchup. So I've got DJ Moore at eight on the week. How much would I have to pay you to start Robbie Anderson in this oh, game? Oh, my word. Uh, I, have, I actually have to start Robbie Anderson in my no. Dynasty League. I have oh, to start yes. him in my Dynasty League because I have. it's either him or Byron Pringle. Uh, okay. And I'm going to lean into the matchup here with Robbie Anderson. But with that being said, he's at wide receiver 45 for me. Yeah, I'm at 48, which is higher, frankly, than I want to have him at this right. point. But you never know. And Sam Darnold is not a streamer anymore. I'm not going to no. talk about it. Uh, yep. For the Falcons, I mean, good to see Cordero Patterson basically take over more of the traditional role. I hope he does more in the passing game this time. But is Patterson a, you know, what, strong RB2 for you? 
Yeah, he is. Uh, as I, I've got him at 15 on the week. Uh, so you look at this backfield. I mean, where's where's Mike Davis? You know, my, even uh, Davis left last week with an injury, but and I haven't heard anything on that up to this yeah. point. Um, but even with that being said, it was Patterson's backfield before then. So coming out of their bye week, they said, "All right, this is Patterson. We're moving forward with him." So I think at this point, yeah, RB 15 on the week, solid play. Yeah, I'm at 12, actually. I'm a little more bullish on him. But, uh, yeah, the Davis injury, and, again, I, I assume he's fine because, like you, I haven't heard anything on it. But that was at the very end of the game. He was completely phased out throughout. I only got yep. four touches. I have him at RB40 this week, so that is a clear sit for me. How about the wide receivers here? Yates, obviously, I mean, you you labeled Calvin Ridley as a sell high after a game which only had <laughs> yeah. 26 high. yards. Right. High, high, right, quote, unquote. I saw Ridley at 15 in this one. I mean, he's st- he's getting the target, so it's somebody who I'm still willing to throw out there. How about you? Yeah, I've got him at 18 on the week, so definitely okay. still someone that you can consider starting as a mid-range or uh, wide receiver too. But we just we have to downgrade him based on. I mean, we came into the year thinking that he was a top five play. Yeah. Uh, do you want to start Russell Gage in this one? Not in this one, unless I'm absolutely desperate. I've got Gage at 52 on the week. Uh, name a tight end who you have ranked ahead of Kyle Pitts this week. Travis Kelsey. Very good. That is the correct answer. That's the end of the list. That is the end of the list, and that is the correct answer. All right, Yates, let's go to the Titans at the Colts. You are starting A.J. Brown here, who looked fantastic. Are you starting Julio Jones in this game? Uh, So he did not practice yesterday, so that's worth monitoring. Uh, But if he does play, I think he's a mid-range wide receiver three. Uh, I'm starting him over Tyler Lockett. I would start him over Christian Kirk, who played last night. Uh, LaVisca Chanel, he's at 31 in my wide receiver rankings. Yeah, I have him a little lower right now, but I think it's much more about I want to see that practice. I do expect him to play, obviously. He played last week. This strikes me as something they're going to manage a little bit in the same way that A.J. Brown missed practice a bunch, usually generally speaking. Uh, Derrick Henry, of course, you're starting. How about Tannehill here? Is he in your top 12 for quarterbacks? He is. He's at 11 on the week for me. So you look at the matchup up against Indianapolis. I think that this game, uh, you know, with Tennessee's secondary, I, based on what we saw from Kansas City last week, I'm not taking anything away from uh, uh, from this defense saying that they're a top tier unit or anything like that. So I think that we are going to see Indianapolis move the ball. We're going to see Ryan Tannehill have to throw the ball a little bit more than yep. uh, he has in uh, weeks past. So I have Tannehill at 11 on the week. Yeah, I am at 12. And again, I mean, I believe the Colts are number one in defensive DVOA against the rush. So probably bench Derrick Henry. Um, I'm kidding. Derrick Henry's number one, but it is going to be that. interesting to whether or not their Titans are going to need to throw the ball a little bit more. And let's hope, right? I'm waiting for that Tannehill right. game, right, at this point. And again, it's it's really more about the touchdowns. Nobody else, by the way, the receivers, Tannehill, mm-hmm. Henry, nobody else in the Titans, right? Nope. For the Colts, uh, you are starting Jonathan Taylor, of course, Talk to me about Michael Pittman Jr. and specifically whether it matters to you at all where you rank him if T.Y. Hilton suits up here. It really does not matter uh, if T.Y. Hilton suits up because even if Hilton suits up, we don't know what his health status is. We don't know what his snap count is going to be. We don't know what his involvement in the offense is going to look like. So uh, he came back, he torched Houston and was like, which he has done throughout his career and was like, all right, I'm good. Uh, no. So Pittman, I think, is at uh, he's at wide receiver 17 for me on the week. I had him at 15 wow. last week and it paid off like you just got to continue to start this guy. I would start him over Calvin Ridley, uh, Amari Cooper, Robert Woods. I'm all in on Pittman this week against tennessee yeah they give the most points to uh, opposing wide receivers and if hilton does play are you uh you know given your uncertainty here are you benching him yes yeah yeah he's a desperation flex play at best uh yates uh mo Ali cox is just a guy who, <laughs> so frustrating <laughs> i mean you want to talk about uh, efficiency there you go right? are you recommending uh people start mo Ali cox this week uh last week he was kind of a, a solid play just based on the fact that we had so many teams on by i have him at 19 on the week currently i he's ran 20 routes i think uh over the past two weeks and uh yeah and what three targets each of the, yeah three targets each of the past two games uh that is just an unsustainable rate so he is a touchdown or bust option i'm putting him in the same kind of category as i mean cj uzama i mean even guys like david and joku you know it's yeah. just like i really don't yeah. want to start moelle cox that's correct and he'll score two touchdowns and people yep. will be mad and at us which is run. totally fine yeah. uh deeper leagues carson wentz a potential streamer maybe i don't even think in deeper leagues man i've got him at 13 on the week wow all right i like it good i'm at 17 but there's not a whole bunch of difference for me here between the guys who have like daniel jones is right there trevor lawrence is right there those guys are all in the same range but yeah you can to our favorite saying you can get away with starting carson wentz it's uh i tweeted this out earlier this week carson wentz is currently on pace for 27 touchdowns and two interceptions 
Uh, mm. He cannot escape Nick Foles. Yes, no that's what. no matter what. Uh, he looks great now, by the he way. Does. Now that he is, I mean, other than the, some funny, fumble. you know. They, yeah. they what edited that as a fumble. It was a fumble, I, Yates. Did you weird. see it closely? If you looked at it closely, it comes out of his hand Did before it, okay. he actually moves. So, yeah, the guy like tips and it comes out of his hand briefly it's good it's the correct call the correct call um but it did look like an interception and probably should have been credited with an interception regardless because he is trying to make that pass dolphins at the bills uh miles gaskin here yates no malcolm brown now are we going back to the well i i can't do it man i can't do it uh i've got him at rb 31 on the week man i think uh, this is uh based on the uh the pattern here this is supposed to be a down game for miles gaskin right yeah that's uh, correct every other week uh, up against Buffalo, it's a tough matchup. If this was a more favorable matchup, I think I'd be a, a little bit more uh, interested in starting Miles Gaskin. But we could easily see Miami just go, we can't run the ball. We just we get behind early just based on the state of their defense, and they move yep. away from it. Where Gaskin could be involved in the receiving game, but there's a lot of variables here. So I'm only starting Gaskin if I absolutely have to. I've got him at 27, so still a flex play. Not not that much higher than you, but yeah, man. It's like it's hard to get away from it if you do the projections. Like there's enough there where you say, okay, I guess this guy basically right. comes in as a flex starter. But man, I just do not want to have to be here waiting for him to fumble the ball early and then it's just Savannah right. Right, the entire right. game. So we'll see. How about the wide receivers here? I mean, Devontae Parker is questionable. He doesn't make it sound that great. Like he's right. going to play. People may know at this point. So Jalen Waddell, assuming Parker does play, assuming assuming Parker doesn't play. Uh, yeah, I mean, regardless, I think he's at wide receiver 30 for me. And as okay. a mid-range wide receiver three, he might move down a couple of spots if we get news that Parker is going to play. But I mean, target volume and the connection with Tua, I think it's there. So he, he doesn't have a ton of upside just based on the matchup, right? Buffalo, the, the toughest matchup for opposing wide receivers this season yep. uh, from a fantasy perspective. So I, there's not a ton of upside, but he's going to bring a safe floor. So I will go uh, with him as a mid-range wide receiver three. I have him exactly at 30 as well. And Mike Kosicki is just a locked and loaded tight end that you keep in your lineup right at this point man we got to uh he's at tight yeah. end four for me yeah he's at five for me as well uh just a guy who you don't think about at this point for the bills talk to me about the running backs yates thought it looked like uh, zach moss was just going to kind of take that backfield and now it does not so are you starting either one of these guys here he kind of falls into the same camp of James Conner, where it's like game script, right? Game script is going to play a massive role in the uh, the range of outcomes for Zach Moss. And we look at this projected game script for Buffalo and we say, yeah, they're probably going to go up big on Miami. And sure. if that's the case, then they could lean on their run game in the uh, second half. So Zach Moss is currently at 28 on the week for me. I think you can start him if you are in a pinch. And then Devin Singletary further down the list, uh, as always, I have him at running back 39. Yeah, I'm a little, uh, I'm basically right there. I have Moss at 25 and Singletary at 37. So you certainly can get away with Moss and just cross your fingers and let's see what happens. You're, of course, starting Stefan Diggs and you're starting Emmanuel Sanders, right? Like at this point, you're just in your line. My best friend forever. Absolutely. The act okay, if I had to ask you, who is your BFF? Is it Logan Thomas or is it Emmanuel Sanders? Which it's one very, are you going to say? I, I just, I would just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, man. It would be one of those things where I would just leave. I would like, you know, you'd see the door open you and just I'd walk, walk out. out. Yep. I can't. They're my guys. What do you want? But are you finally in on Emmanuel Sanders? I, well, I have been at no, least to the no, point no. of saying that he's a flex play, but yeah, man, uh, wide receiver 25. For me. If you are going to tell me that I'm out on Michael Pittman Jr., who I love, then I'm That's going to fair. tell you that you're That's out fair. on Emmanuel Sanders. How That's about fair. Cole Beasley though? Yay. I'm a little intrigued by this because of the lack of Dawson Knox. It, yes, uh, intrigued to the point where I've got him at wide receiver 41 on the week. Uh, okay. I mean, he he's had these games where he's, uh, you know, come through and then has absolutely disappeared. Now, yeah, you're right. The Dawson Knox factor could play a role in the over the middle of the field targets for them, uh, for Beasley. But yeah, at wide receiver 41. So he's a flex play. He's definitely within my top 48 wide receivers on the week, but definitely someone that falls into the same camp as, I mean, I've got him. <laughs> I have him back to back with guys like Jacoby Myers, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry, all of these like yeah. slot receivers. They're just, they're all right next to one another. Yeah, I'm a little higher on Beasley this week because I do expect the vacated targets by Knox and just the general outlook on this uh, to be better here for Beasley. So I've got him at 33. He's a wide, a low end wide receiver three for me, and I'm willing to roll with him this week, but there is obviously risk there given all the uncertainty. You look at his targets, they're just bounce back and forth like a ping pong ball over there. Yep. Bengals at the Jets. Uh, you're starting Joe Mixon here. Out of curiosity, like, what do you expect? The Bengals are 10.5 point favorites at this point. Is this like a smash spot here for Mixon, or is this more of the like borderline RB1 spot? 
Uh, it really isn't a smash spot because I think that we could see, you know, I talked about it, uh, I talked about it earlier with uh, the over under challenge, like with Joe Burrow, we could see him throw for multiple touchdowns. You know, I think Jamar Chase is the one that benefits the most here, uh, but then we could see some Ajay Pirine factor in just like we did last week, right? Where Cincinnati blew out Baltimore. Yep. Uh, then we saw Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan essentially end with a near even split, you know, as far as carries. So I think we could see Joe Mixon find the end zone. He scored four straight games here. Uh, so I think that he's absolutely someone that we can look at. I've got him at RB nine on the week. Uh, and then Samaj P. Ryan, if you are absolutely, absolutely desperate, I know that he's out there on waiver wires. You can pick him up. He should probably be rostered regardless, mm -hmm. just regardless. as sort of the yeah. insurance policy one here. Yeah, I have uh, mixed in a couple spots lower, but he's obviously starting for you. Of course, you're starting Jamar Chase. How about T. Higgins here? I mean, he got the targets, but, you know, still hasn't really had that big game here uh, in a while. What do you think of him? A lot of questions this week about T. Higgins uh, from, from listeners. So I've got T. Higgins at 23 on the week. I absolutely think that this is a matchup where you look his way. The fact that he led this team in targets last week and had 15 targets in a game where Cincinnati was up big, like that leads me to believe that we're seeing the involvement bounce back here for T. Higgins. And even though he was seven for 62 and, uh, and no touchdown last week, like that doesn't kill you. That's still a solid, solid line. And the matchup is a lot more favorable this week against the New York corners than it was Baltimore's corner. So I'm starting T. Higgins this week if I've got him. And you mentioned Tyler Boyd. This is the guy who's basically right in the – I mean, I've met 43. Is that exactly where you have him? Uh, I've met 39. Oh, all right. Well, in that range. You love him. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, again, yeah. you can get away with him as a flex, but not somebody who you are excited Dude, about. What, what's the upside? Right? right. What's the upside? Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, CJ Uzama, I have at 16. Yeah, it's, what do you got? In that same range for me. Uh, I've got it. him at 14. So you look at the matchup here against New York, and you just say there's a very good chance that he finds the end zone here. So yep. that's what I'm kind of banking on. Yeah. For the Jets, it's going to be Mike White under center. So, I mean, you know, 44% of the targets went to running backs with White. <laughs> so how do you feel here about Michael Carter? I've got him at RB27 on the week. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's not someone that I'm willing to play over guys like Kenneth Gainwell, uh, Alex Collins, Devontae Booker, guys who, I mean, Khalil Herbert too, like guys who have locked in workloads um, and have better matchups. But you look at Michael Carter and you just say the the opportunity, especially in a full PPR format, you can look his way if you, uh, if you need an RB2 there or a high-end RB3. Yeah, he's been getting the work and he'll probably continue to get uh, a ton of targets here in this game in a negative game script, I'm sure. So uh, I'm fine with him. Absolutely. I have him right now at RB24. Uh, are you starting any receiver for the Jets here with White under center? I would really rather not. <laughs> uh, Corey Davis at 44 for me. And then that's really the only guy that I would be considering, right? Jamison Crowder hasn't done anything since uh, his game, his first game back against New England. And then Elijah Moore scored last week, but only had two total touches. Uh, so you just, you can't trust him. So Corey Davis is a desperation play at best. Yeah, I've got Davis at 39. I feel disgusting about it. Um, mm -hmm. But that that's the highest and only guy who I am willing to talk about starting um, this week as a Jets receiver, and I would just much rather avoid it, which is basically my motto for everything Jets. So is Davis out, Yates? Is that what you saw? Uh, I'd say uh, Robert Sala said that it's not looking good for him to play on Sunday. So, okay. yeah, I would uh, I would bet on him not playing. That does not move Jamison Crowder or Elijah Moore into starting consideration for me. This offense is going to be terrible. I agree. I will go on a limb, out on a limb, and say that you should start the Bengals DST this week. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, good call. Oh, yeah, no Don't one's talking about, about that. That's a good call. Oh, uh, by the way, I would, uh, I, I recommend it to people, even when I, when I did it. Like that, to me, that was worth a number one waiver wire pickup. Like I was willing to go oh, there, yeah. and especially pick that this up. week. Yeah. yeah, at this point, go for it. Uh, Steelers at the Browns. Uh, okay, we got a lot of. <laughs> We got a lot of injuries here going on. Let's start with the running backs. Nick Chubb is going to play here, so I assume you just you start Nick Chubb, obviously, right? Because he's yes. playing. Uh, any interest in Dearness Johnson here? Is that complimentary back? Not, not yet. Uh, I think I want to see what this what this split looks like, right? I want to see what his involvement and role looks like uh, because. Is he going to see Kareem Hunt's workload that he had, right, particularly as a receiver? Then that's going to have value. But there's also the potential that Nick Chubb gets the ball 25 times in this one, right, uh, in a divisional matchup where they just lean on the on the run game. So I just don't know confidently what Dearness Johnson's role is going to be like. And with only two teams on by, this is a week where you don't have to start Dearness Johnson. So if you got him, I would just prefer to sit him on my bench uh, one week and see what his role looks like. 
I agree. Uh, uncertainty surrounding the quarterback situation with Mayfield versus Case Keenum. Uncertainty at wide receiver, where it sounds like Jarvis Landry is going to play, but we do not know about Odell Beckham Jr. Yates, let's assume every, let's assume all the players that you would like to play play Mayfield, OBJ, Landry. Are you starting any of them? I'm starting Landry just inside my top 40 wide receivers on the week. I am not looking at Odell Beckham Jr., uh, even if he does play, uh, and that's pretty much it. I'm not looking at any of the tight ends. Like, this is just an offense. It's Nick Chubb, and that's pretty much it. All right, for the Steelers, of course, you're starting Najee Harris. Despite the fact that it's a tough matchup, you are starting Deontay Johnson, as you always do. How do you feel about Chase Claypool in this one? Uh, Claypool, I have at, where do I have him? Uh, 26 on the week. So he is definitely someone that you can look at as a high-end wide receiver three. The upside is still there for Chase Claypool, and the Cleveland Browns secondary has not been as stout as we thought it would be. Yep. Uh, can Ben get it done, Get it done though, right? That's the question. So Claypool at 26 for me has upside, but also we saw has a, a lower floor, right? With only two for 17 the last game that he played. So I've got 20, uh, Claypool at 26. How about Pat Fryermuth getting a little more involved here without Juju? Absolutely. I think that you can look his way if you're in a pinch. I've got him at 17 on the week. So he's someone that uh, the, the target volume was there last week. Uh, uh, sorry, last game. Uh, seven targets. He caught all seven of them. So definitely can look at Fryermuth if you are in a pinch. Uh, he's a solid streaming option this week. Eagles at the Lions. We talked briefly about Gainwell uh, in the over-under challenge, but where do you actually have him ranked this week? Uh, I have Gainwell at 24. Okay. And Boston Scott, any interest in him? No, I I think that uh, the more that I thought about it, as based on our conversation that we had on the Monday Waiver Wire show, and yeah. then reports came out that Jordan Howard likely to be activated this week, I think that that's what we're going to see is Boston Scott move back into the special teams role here. So uh, he could see, you know, he could sprinkle in here or there, but I think it's going to be Jordan Howard on the ground, and I think it's going to be Kenneth Gainwell uh, as the pass catching option. So, yeah, I would prefer to not play Boston Scott. And assuming that Jordan Howard is activated no you don't play okay that was my question (laughs) Devontae Smith Yates inconsistent are you starting him here he is definitely in consideration for me as a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three he just based on the matchup right you got to look at the matchup and you got to say well if I'm not going to play Devontae Smith here where am I going to play him Uh, so he's at 24 for me how many tight ends do you have ranked ahead of Dallas Goddard I have two Travis Kelsey Kyle Pitts that is the correct answer how many quarterbacks do you have ranked ahead of Jalen Hurts Yates Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford. That's it, huh? Yep, feels good. I love it. It's going to be great. I look forward to your message on Sunday being like, I was right on her, (laughs) it sucks. And then, you know, 45 uh, fourth quarter points. Uh, Okay, for the Lions, DeAndre Swift looks great. You are starting him, and you're still starting TJ Hawkinson, obviously, as a locked-in tight end one. Yes. Okay, very good. Got him at five. Uh, Jamal Williams, Gates? No. Nope. I have Jamal Williams at 35 on the week. Uh, any wide receiver? No. The, I thought it was Amon Ross St. Brown that we yeah. could trust. And then, what, no target that last was week? Really, that was just like, really. What in the world not, are we doing? Um, not right. Yeah. Not right. So, yeah, you can't you can't start any of these guys. I am in agreement with you on everything, which is a very dangerous place to be. Rams <laughs> at Texans. Uh, I think you should start Cooper Cup. And we talked about how we like Robert Woods this week. Where do you actually have him ranked? Robert Woods is at 21 on the board yep. for me. Yeah, comes with me. plenty of upside though yeah for me as well uh matthew stafford what did you say third Second? i got him at three yeah oh, i love it i love it yeah it's gonna be a good spot for him how about higby yates just kind of he's just there I, but he you know there's there's almost never he, he needs the touchdown or he basically doesn't do much mm-hmm. yeah but i mean you look at that i mean that's the story of pretty much every time correct yeah. uh so and then when you look at the offense that he's in and the matchup up against houston who is just bleeding fantasy points Two opposing tight ends. I've got Higby at six on the week, man. You got to play him. Wow. Okay. So you are starting Higby. Higby or Hawkinson? Uh, Hawkinson's at five. Higby at six. So then you are starting Higby over Gronk, assuming he's active. Yes. Yep. Just up against New Orleans. First week back. I want to play it a little bit safe with uh, Gronk. Ahead of Schultz. I've got Schultz at seven. Okay. So pretty close. So he's right there. All right. I'm at nine, but that's fine. He's a starter for both of us. And of course, you feel fine about Daryl Henderson. Yes. Yes. I've got him at six on the week. Didn't come through last week uh, against Detroit, which was kind of weird uh, with that matchup. But I mean, he, it's Houston. You play Daryl Henderson. Yeah. Uh, for the Texans, Mark Ingram's out the door now. So do mm-hmm. you have any interest? No. In it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you uh, had to start one, Yates, I'm forcing you to start one. Which one is it? Scotty Phillips, if he's active. Yates. Yeah. Yates. Yeah. 
Okay, where do you have these All right, guys? So here, no, so let me explain the rationale. So I think what, what we see with them trading away Mark Ingram, right, is they're saying, well, we obviously know that we're not going anywhere this year. So let's trade away our veteran assets. I do think that we're going to see me, potentially Brandon Cooks uh, traded away here. We might see David Johnson shipped off, but I don't know if he has any trade value, right? So that could be just we hold on to him. Um, but what the purpose of that is, is if you're looking to a rebuild, right, you start the guy, you look at your young guys, the guys who haven't been given opportunity, and you see what they have. And Philip Lindsay, what, 2.6 yards per carry on the season. Like David Johnson is not it at this point of his career. So give Scotty Phillips the opportunity. Let's see what happens. And I, when I say that, I mean, like he might see seven carries to Philip Lindsay's six. You know, like I think that we're going to see at least Phillips active to see what he can do. Um, but no, I'm not looking at any of these Houston Texan running backs. What, what about David Johnson, though? You're just completely disregarding him? Yeah. Like why? why would I play David Johnson? Why would you give 16 carries to Mark Ingram in a game where you're behind by 30 <laughs> points, man? The Texans do Texan stuff. It's I, I mean, but is right. that what we want to bet on? Is, uh, is that I, and especially in a week where we have two teams on by? I mean, okay. you know, we're talking about Jamal Williams at RB 35 in my rankings. Am I going to play Jamal Williams or am I going to play David Johnson? I'm going to play Jamal Williams. I'm probably playing David Johnson. I do have him ranked one spot ahead right now. Well, look here. Look, OK, let, let's make it clear, because boy, am I in an uncomfortable position right now where I am <laughs> You're defending, defending the Houston David backfield. Johnson and Houston running backs. I don't want to start a Houston running back right now, but I do think that they both are going to kind of fall into that. Well, David Johnson as a low end flex play. Philip Lindsay right now is 43, but regard yeah of course it's a long-term plan right now man but brandon cooks is basically ready to riot over here when you see his <laughs> tweets i don't think they could just be like oh by the way we're just turning it over like forget these guys like i know we have veteran running backs who are just here but you know what forget it right now like okay after the trade deadline fine ship them off but until then i think that you can potentially get away with david johnson as a very low end flex play but man i have reached my quota about how much i have to defend these guys and again we think Terod taylor by the way yates is coming back here in this yeah. one yeah Okay, yep. very good. So where do you have Brandon Cooks ranked in a difficult matchup? That definitely boosts Brandon Cooks here. But again, you talk about a tough matchup. So I've got him at 29. Yeah. So I've got Jalen Waddle at 30, Julio Jones currently at 31, Judy at 32. He's in that range for me. Okay, very good. Let us please move away from the Texans and get to much more enticing fantasy options, which are the 49ers against the Bears. Um, let's start with the Bears here, Yates. Uh, okay, let's start with... To? Yeah, we do have to. Let's start with Khalil Herbert. Where do you have him ranked? I've got him at 21 on the week. Uh, we got clarity that if Damian Williams is active here, it is Khalil Herbert's backfield. And uh, at this point, I mean, if Dave, no David Montgomery, then you play Khalil Herbert. I think he's got, uh, he's showing that he belongs in this in this league here. So I've got Herbert at 21 on the week. Yeah, I'm at 20. I am in agreement and no interest in Damian Williams, right? No. Okay, nope. very good. Yates, uh, I mean, are you even considering starting any pass catcher here for the Bears? You can't right now. Uh, I did a uh, film breakdown on Twitter, uh, a thread here recently talking about like, this is just your Matt Nagy is trying to do a pu uh, like and build a puzzle here, but they've got puzzle pieces from four different sets. You know, they're taking a quick passing game, uh, which fits Allen Robinson's skill set so well for him to be able to create uh, separation, fantastic releases, sure hands, everything like that. And then you have Justin Fields, who was never billed as that, right? He's never billed as a uh, quick processor, someone who's going to be able to adjust at the line of scrimmage. That's what Andy Dalton was going to be able to do. So Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney at this point, we can't we can't look their way until we see consecutive games of Justin Fields in this offense starting to turn things around and the play calling, the scheme change. Uh, I Last week, obviously, you had plenty of people on by but the number of people who asked start sick questions where i wound up giving the answer of mooney or robinson was way too many so yep. way just not again no way i mean i i hope alan robinson gets uh traded and i liked your dynasty trade i'm just going to put that out there publicly for that one um are you starting khalil herbert or elijah mitchell i have mitchell one spot ahead so i will That's start right. elijah mitchell as do I. Uh, and of course, Debo Samuel is a starter for you. Is there anybody else on San Francisco you want to think about starting? Uh, Samuel was banged up, right? But he's expected to play. He came back to practice uh, okay, on Thursday. Perfect. So I'm yep. assuming he plays, obviously. Yeah. If yep, he doesn't, Gates, if he doesn't. I'm sorry. No. You say where you have him. I yeah, I, I have a Debo at 12 right now. Uh, yeah. and there's a potential that he moves up, right? I had, I had knocked him down a couple of spots um, just based on the injury. Uh, but he'll probably move back up. And then uh, Brandon Ayuk, never. And even if, De what if Debo misses this game again? I'm assuming he's going to play. And I'm sorry, the reason I didn't ask about Debo is because I assume we are in the spot right now where if Debo Samuel plays, he is essentially oh, a yeah, wide receiver one. one yeah, one hundred percent. Very good. So if he doesn't though, Yates, then do you have any interest in Brandon Ayuk? You can't do it, man. 
Uh, you can't do it. He's in this doghouse for Kyle Shanahan for some reason, uh, and it's just not working. Uh, it's yeah. not. He's not getting the opportunity. So, Brendan Ayuk currently is just clogging space on fantasy rosters uh, on the benches, and uh, yeah, you can't look his way even if Debo misses. All right, Patriots at the Chargers. It is a great matchup for a guy who has scored touchdowns in three straight games. How high do you have Damian Harris this week? I have Damian Harris at RB14 on the week. Very good. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what you want going up great against the matchup. Uh, great, great matchup. matchup. The Chargers are last in uh, DVOA against the Rush. And again, Harris is getting the goal line work. Obviously, the fumble against Houston did not scare anybody off. And who the heck knows whether or not Ramondre Stevenson is going to be active here. Right. And you mentioned Jacoby Myers earlier, Yates. I can't remember where you said you had him ranked around. I have Myers at 37. Tougher mm-hmm. matchup this week against the Chargers uh, pass defense. So, I I mean, what's the upside for Myers uh, at this point? Until I see him, just kind of like with Chase Edmonds, until I see him find the end zone, uh, like what's the upside? I'm not going to rank him higher than a you know low-end wide receiver three. So, I've got him at 30. 37 on the week. Would you rather start him or LaVisca Chanel? I would start LaVisca Chanel. I've got him at 36, one spot above. How about Myers or Jerry Judy in his first game back? I would start Jerry Judy in his first game back. Better matchup up against Washington. So John o. Smith looks like he avoided injury. Looks like he might be able to uh, to suit up here. Uh, are you going to start Hunter Henry and or John o. Smith, who is getting involved a little bit? It was it was encouraging to see the Patriots remember that they have Johnny Smith on their roster and that he can catch passes uh, and move the chains. Uh, but then, no, you can't you can't you can't trust him just yet. Uh, I want to see I want to see consecutive games here from Johnny where the workload is there uh, and that he's running routes. I want to watch I want to watch the uh, receiving routes run. Metric there, Hunter Henry scored what four straight games. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at this point, I mean, he's just a low end locked in low end tight end one, high end tight end two. Yeah, I got him at eight. I have no fear of starting Hunter Henry. For the Chargers, Austin Eckler obviously uh, didn't practice on yeah. Thursday with the hip issue. Let, uh, you know, let, let's say if Eckler starts, you're starting him, of course. Of course. Uh, if he doesn't, Yates, what are you doing here with this backfield? I would probably prefer to avoid it uh, unless I am just absolutely in a pinch. Uh, I think, I mean, even at this point, man, would you play David Johnson over Larry Roundtree or Justin I, Jackson? Because I, I think that they're going to split. <laughs> I think that they're going to split the workload, even if uh, if Eckler misses. I don't know what I will do. I will just try <laughs> and find another situation. I'm very thankful right now that it is not last week where we had all the teams on by. Right, that we, right. uh, Fancy Magic should be able to hopefully find better options but again that's why you can check out our rankings whenever you want when i do a massive saturday night uh projection and ranking sweep and then again on our sunday morning on instagram i'm on from uh the fantasy bros account 10 a.m to 11 a.m yates is on the noon to 1 p.m uh live stream on our youtube channel keenan allen and mike williams just generally speaking yates how you feeling about him here with Mike Williams, I think that we're uh, we got the bye week, we got him the ability to rest up. So I've got him at 11 on the week, and then mm-hmm. Keenan Allen at 19. Okay, so you're just starting both, as am I, of course. Uh, a little, no, I'm a little higher on Keenan Allen, a little lower on Mike Williams, but they're obviously both starting options for you. How about Jared Cook, Yates? I'm getting a lot of talk. Obviously, it's a tough matchup here for him uh, for tight ends. What do you think about Cook this week? I've got him at 15 on the week, so I would start guys like Hunter Henry over him. I would take the shot on CJ Uzama, but he's in the same territory of Dan Arnold, Pat Fryermuth, like in that range. Uh, so Jared Cook is a start technically for me, but uh, I would. there are some other options I'd prefer to go with. I'm right there with you. How about would you start this week Justin Herbert or Tom Brady against New Orleans? I would start Tom Brady. <clears throat> I've got Brady at 7. I've got Herbert at 10. Okay, you got Herbert at 10. Okay, so Joe Burrow or Herbert? Uh, Burrow. I have Burrow okay. at 8, Herbert at 10. Last time Herbert played, I know that you know it was his rookie season, sure. but last time Herbert faced uh, New England, it did not go well. So <laughs> no. you know, I think that uh, I'm not expecting a big blow-up performance here. And then with that being said, he's going to score four touchdowns now just because I said that. Obviously, way to jinx it. Uh, Jaguars yeah. at the Seahawks. Let's start with the Seahawks here. Where do you have Alex Collins ranked? I have Alex Collins at 23 on the week. Uh, he's definitely someone that has not been efficient, has not been, has not looked great, but has continued to get the volume, and he's going up against Jacksonville. So you need to consider him as a low-end RB2. Very good. Uh, and no interest in Rashad Penny for this game, at least, no. right? Okay, nope. very good. Uh, the receivers, Yates, uh, I mean, look, uh, DK Metcalf wound up with a good game there in a, in a difficult matchup, of course, with based on one catch that was 
probably an offensive pass interference. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I assume DK Metcalf remains in your starting lineup every single week, right? Yeah, I've got him at 16 on the week. So, you know, he's he's that high because it's Jacksonville. Uh, right. So I, otherwise, if it was a tougher matchup, I'd probably be downgrading him to uh, around where I've got Amari Cooper, Robert Woods, Adam Thielen. You know, it's just Geno Smith. He's not pushing the ball downfield and, uh, so, and not doing th- many things for this offense. So DK Metcalf, until we see Russell Wilson return, he is a mid-range wide receiver two, low-end wide receiver two. I think it's funny because I, I look at my rankings. If you're watching on YouTube and you see me looking to the right, I'm looking at my other screen where my rankings are, and I have Adam Thielen at 18, DK Metcalf at 19, Amari Cooper at 20, and Robert Woods at 21, which is basically like, oh, you just named the three guys. Yeah, it's that he is right smack in the middle of. So, yeah, you're starting DK Metcalf, but I am concerned. And I'm certainly concerned about Tyler Lockett, Yates. Uh, oh, what word. are you doing with Lockett here with Geno still? I'm sitting him if I can. Uh, I've got him at 33 on the week. Uh, yeah. And that's just because, I mean, it's Tyler Lockett, you know, like, but you yep. look at guys like, I mean, Jerry Judy in his first game back, I will play Judy over Lockett. Uh, Julio Jones, even if he's banged up, I will play over Lockett. Cortland Sutton, Brandon Cooks, like all these guys. Yep. Uh, Lockett, what is the upside? There's yep. none. It is really rough to watch at this point. Would you start uh, another receiver in this game, Marvin Jones versus Tyler Lockett? Uh, yes, I would start Marvin Jones. I was like, yeah, I, but I couldn't find it because yeah. he's higher up. Uh, yep. Marvin Jones at 27, Tyler Lockett yep. at 23. Man, I really hope it's a sign of things to come, what we recently saw. What about Chenault versus Lockett? Uh, I would go Lockett there, but they're in the same tier. So if you yep. want to play Chanel over Lockett, I'm not going to fight you on that one. Yep, I am in agreement with you. I have Jones at 28, Lockett at 31, and Chanel at 36. So all right around there. We love us some James Robinson every single week, no matter what. He is locked in as – actually, I mean, I am lower than I usually do, but I guess I shouldn't say that because, you know, I have him at as a low-end RB1, but I guess mm-hmm. I should clarify Yates. Is that where you have him? Yeah, I have him at 11. Uh, Seattle's run defense is actually a pretty stout unit, so Correct. you got to downgrade him slightly, but, I mean, you still start James Robinson. Yeah, sorry, I should clarify. I don't mean like, oh, he's RB4 or anything like that, but he is obviously right. a start. Uh, any interest in streaming Trevor Lawrence in a deeper league? In a deeper league, yes. I have Lawrence at 17 on the week, so he's someone that you can look at in a deeper format in you know typical 1QB leagues, 12 teams, than I am I'm looking elsewhere. I would play... Uh, I would play Matt Ryan over Trevor Lawrence. I would yes. play Carson Wentz over Trevor Lawrence. Those kind of guys. Okay. Uh, and last time you yelled at me for not letting you talk about Dan Arnold. So do you want to talk about Dan Arnold? Uh, I have Dan Arnold at 16. So okay. he is someone that technically is a sit for me uh, based on our criteria. We cut that off at 15. But I do think that uh, the target volume will be there for him. So I will. I think he's someone that you can look at. I've got him sandwiched between Jared Cook and Pat Frymuth. And remind me, I know you said where you had him ranked, but CJ Uzama or Dan Arnold? Uh, I've got Uzama at 14, Arnold at 16. Very good. Uh, Bucks visiting the Saints. Uh, okay, James so. James Winston revenge game. Uh, this is going to be a good one to watch. Uh, I'm sure they'll just let Winston go nuts. Absolutely. That's what you want to do to win a game. Um, for <laughs> You said Brady was where? Six? Seven? Seven. Seven. Seven for you. Okay, so still a start, obviously, but maybe a little less enticing than usual just against a very tough Saints defense. You're not, I mean, Antonio Brown hasn't been officially ruled out, but he's going to be ruled out for this game. Yep. But Rob Gronkowski hasn't officially been declared in, but he's going to be declared in. So first, talk about the wide receivers here for me. How do you feel about Evans and Godwin with Brown out? Yeah, so I am assuming that Antonio Brown is not going to play for this mm-hmm. one. So uh, in my rankings here, I've got Chris Godwin at 10 on the week and then Mike Evans at 13. I think both are very, very solid plays. Yeah, obviously, you know, Evans has a, a difficult career here yep. matching up against Lattimore, but He's still a guy who you've got to start. And you are throwing Gronk back in your starting lineup now that he's back, correct? Absolutely. If you've got him, unless you have one of the, you know, I've you know, I mentioned, you know, top five options or whatever, uh, then you're playing Gronk. Yep. Uh, I have Leonard Fournette this week. Again, a tough matchup at 15 Yates. He's just a guy who you start now every single week. Do you agree? You are correct that this is a tougher matchup. And you are also correct that you should be starting Leonard Fournette. I've got him at 16 on the week. Very good for the Saints, of course. Uh, Alvin Kamara, you're not you're not starting Mark Ingram Yates in this matchup. No, no, Thank no, no. Thank you no. very much, uh, Yates. Do you want to start any other Saints player? Uh, no. <laughs> that is the nope. correct answer. I had to think Who's... through. I was like, wide receivers, no. Nope. Tight end, no. Who is the uh, highest? I, for me, it's Callaway at 44 <clears throat> at wide receiver. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Callaway, but okay. I mean, I've got him at 46. Yes, exactly. So we're right in that same range. You, you don't want to go there if you can avoid it. 
Uh, Washington football team at the Denver Broncos. Go with the Broncos. Yates, running backs. How do you feel about them? Kind of the same as I always do. Uh, low end running back twos, high end RB threes. I've got Williams at 26, Melvin Gordon at 29 on the week. Very good. I am right there with you. How about the wide receivers? You're still you're starting <laughs> Cortland Sutton. No questions asked, right? Um, no, I don't know if I would classify it as no questions really? asked. Okay. Um, I've got him at 28 on the week. So I mean, okay. if there if I've got Devontae Smith, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, T Higgins, like I'm playing them over. Cortland Sutton with Jerry Judy coming back to the lineup, this offense isn't exactly a top five unit yep. uh, with Teddy Brid- Bridgewater at quarterback. So I don't know what the target volume is going to look like for Sutton. It is a great matchup. You know, I, I don't want to take that away. So that's why he is even as high as 28 in my rankings. But uh, I do have concerns here about Sutton and just what we're going to see. All right. I'm at 24. And again, that to me, that is as somebody who I'm like, of course, I'm starting. There are scenarios, of sure, course, where you could have sure. three wide receivers better. But yeah, I agree. Obviously, I want to see what this looks like necessarily. But it is, I think Sutton at this point, especially with the matchup, has earned, you know, certainly being in your lineup. And where do you say you have Judy ranked here in his first game back? 32. Very good. Yeah, I have Judy in my first cut at 38. But again, this is something where I could definitely move him up. At This is going to be Saturday night where I read about what's the sort of expected usage, everything like that. He's a guy you can get away with starting even in his first game. And Noah Fant in your starting lineups? I am concerned about Noah Fant with Judy returning to the lineup as far as the target volume. Uh, I've got Noah Fant at 12, so he's still certainly someone that you're starting, especially at the tight end position. But I do have my concerns here with Fant, uh, with Judy returning to the lineup and what the target split is going to look like. Okay, for Washington, I'm assuming Antonio Gibson is going to be good to go here. And are you just putting him out in your lineup? Uh, I mean, again, it depends on the scenario and the situation, but I've got Gibson at 19 on the week. So he is someone that I am starting as a top 20 running back. But if I've got guys like Daryl Williams, uh, Chuba Hubbard, Cordell Patterson, I'm starting them over Antonio Gibson. How about JD McKissick? Uh, McKissick is lower down. He's at 32 on the week. I would prefer to sit him if I've got him. That is exactly where I have him. You're starting Terry McLaurin. Are you starting Ricky Seals Jones here? Yes, uh, still at this point, as long as Logan Thomas is out of the lineup, then you start Ricky Seals-Jones. I've got him at 10. Yeah, I've got him at 11. I agree. Cowboys at the Vikings, we obviously have question marks here. Let's first assume that Dak is going to play. Do you start Dak if he plays? Yes, absolutely. In this matchup, a game that should just go back and forth, going to be a fun one to watch if Dak plays. I've got him at 5 on the week currently. Okay, break down. (laughs) We'll assume Dak plays here, Yates. Uh, Break down the wide receivers here for me. And again, you can caveat it if Michael Gallup plays versus if he does not play yeah so right now I am not taking into account that Michael Gallup is going to play just in my first run of rankings so mm-hmm. uh, I have CD Lamb at nine on the week I have Amari Cooper at 20 and then Gallup is further down just, but just because again I haven't taken that into account yet he hasn't been declared active so uh, I think that CD Lamb would move down into the mid-range wide receiver two territory I'd still start him over DK Metcalf Michael Pittman Jr. Calvin Ridley uh, Amari Cooper probably just bumped down a couple of spots there still as a top 24 play then Gallup would be a you know I'd put him at like 44 43 which would be above Darnell Mooney and Corey Davis yeah you have this right I think um in the way you're assessing it I basically have them ranked almost identically to where you do and I think that the movement would be pretty much the same like you don't need to get away from any of these guys I highly doubt that Gallup's going to come out there and just get a full complement of snaps going in but he will impact things for sure He will also, in my mind, as we have said on the waiver wire show, impact what I think is Dalton Schultz. Right now, I'm starting Dalton Schultz regardless. Even if Gallup comes back, I'm still starting Dalton Schultz, but I'll probably drop him a little bit. You're starting Dalton Schultz with confidence, Yates? Yep, the exact same uh, perspective there with Dalton Schultz. I'll bump him down a couple of spots if Gallup returns, but otherwise, uh, still a solid play. You're starting Zeke. How about Tony Pollard here? Pollard's a little bit further down. I've got him at 33 on the week, just behind J.D. McKissick and Miles Gaskin. So uh, he's still in the flex conversation for me, really in the same range of like A.J. Dillon. You know, he's going to get work, but what's the upside? He's got to find the end zone to uh, crack the top 24. So I've got him at 33. On Sunday morning, Yates, you learned that Dak Prescott is not going to play in that night's game. What are you doing with everybody? You got to downgrade him. Uh, You got to downgrade him, I mean, significantly. Uh, Who even is the backup quarterback? And Is it Garrett Gilbert? I think it's, isn't it Rush? I'll look it up, but uh, go ahead. It's either Gilbert or Cooper Rush. I couldn't remember off the top I'll of my head. I'll look it up. I but either Rush. way, not great. Uh, so <laughs> you have to downgrade them slightly. Uh, I think that Zeke would just move down a couple of spots. The wide receivers, you would definitely have to downgrade uh, just because we don't know what the volume is going to be. Uh, we don't know what the quality of the play is going to be. So yeah, you got to downgrade them, uh, but they would still be, I think, 
Lamb and Cooper would still be solid plays. Dalton Schultz would probably remain where he is just because of short area targets. Uh, but And then Zeke, I think they would lean on the run game a little bit more if that is yeah. the case. It is a rush, thankfully. I did not completely embarrass myself. Um, but wow, thanks. Uh, I, I know, crazy. Um, first time on this whole podcast. Uh, <laughs> but I, I agree with you that I would still start these guys, but they definitely are going to move down my rankings because it's just not the same. For the Vikings, this is just kind of a start everybody game. You're starting Delvin Cook. You're starting uh, Justin Jefferson. You're starting Adam Thielen, as we talked about. How about yep. Kirk Cousins here, Yates, in a matchup where they're going to need some points? Yep, I've got him at nine on the week. Uh, yep. I think that this is a really, really solid spot for Kirk Cousins just because, again, the projected game script, if this is going to go back and forth all game long, again, that is with the assumption that Dak Prescott is playing. So sure. I think, you know, Kirk Cousins might move down a couple of spots if uh, if we get word that Dak isn't going to play, but I still think that he's a solid, solid play this week. Yeah, uh, I agree. I'm at 10. I'm uh, fine to start Kirk Cousins, which is right when he uh, lets you down. Um, mm-hmm. How about do you want the... You know, fourth option here uh, in the passing, either KJ Osborne or Tyler Conklin, or no interest in either. Uh, KJ Osborne is intriguing in deeper formats. I've got him at 50 on the week. So he's someone that you can look at if you are in need of a flex in a 14 team league or something like that. I think that there's the potential. Again, if this game is a shootout, then they're going to need KJ Osborne. Uh, so I've got him at 50. I think he is a, at least a solid play in that situation. Uh, Tyler Conklin, a little bit further down in my tight end rankings. I got him inside my top 20, though. Yep, ditto. Uh, final game, Giants at the Chiefs. Let's start with the Chiefs because we don't know nothing about the Giants. Um, you've got <laughs> Daryl Williams. You've got Patrick Mahomes. Interesting, though, Yates. I have Mahomes at two. Uh, he's outside of your top four, at least, right? Where is he for you? I've got him at six. Ooh, okay. All right. I feel like this is going to be the bounce back game for I Patrick Mahomes. So, man. Chiefs I hope so, man. I hope so, but based on what we've seen the past couple weeks, whew. It has not looked good, um, but of course you are starting Tyreek Hill. Of course you are starting yep. Travis Kelsey, assuming that yep. Tyreek Hill is healthy, of course. Where do you ha- actually have Darrell Williams ranked in this one? Obviously a quiet game last week. Yeah, I've got him at uh, 17, and he had a quiet game just because, I mean, the offense had a quiet game. Yeah. Uh, so I do think in this matchup we can see him bounce back. He's still a solid play. Yeah, frankly, at 50 total yards and some catches, like you can live with that considering right, what that right. offense looked like in that game. I agree. I have him as a uh, RB16 here. Anybody else? I mean, McCall Hardman's getting more involved, but he fumbled and, and can't really explode. What do you think? Yeah, I've got him uh, right around that same range as uh, KJ Osborne. I've got him at 49 on the week. So deep league, flex play, that's it. Yates, I got a lot of questions of Daniel Jones versus Aaron Rodgers because they were back-to-back uh, for me in my rankings. I said Rodgers just because of the uncertainty with the pass catchers. Where do you have Daniel Jones ranked this week? I would have said Jones. Uh, okay. I have Jones at, uh, where do I have? I've met 12 currently okay. on the week. I had Rogers at 14. So yeah. I was a little bit concerned uh, with yeah. Rogers there. So Jones, I think uh, I talked about it on the waiver wire podcast. You know, like if we, if we get word that we're going to have at least a couple of the receiving options return here for, uh, for New York, then I think Jones would potentially move up to above someone like Justin Herbert. I'd probably play Jones over Justin Herbert. Uh, wow. Just because, I mean, the matchup, man. It is completely 100% the matchup. <clears throat> and uh, we look at Jones and his rushing ability, starting to, to flash that again here. So I think that he's a solid play this week if you're in need of a streaming option. Yeah, I had Rodgers at 13. I had Jones at 14. It's very close for me. Uh, I But again, we're here right now. We don't know exactly what we're going to see. I think the one guy we probably know is going to play, at least as you and I record this, is Sterling Shepard. Everything is trending right for him. But we don't know necessarily about Tony. We don't know necessarily, again, just receivers here. We don't know necessarily about Galladay. So let's assume Galladay and Tony are out, Yates, and Shepard and Slayton are in. Do you want to start either one of them? I will start Shepard. I've got him currently at wide receiver 35 on the week. So mm-hmm. he is someone that, you know, assuming that he does play, he's a low end wide receiver three right above LaVisca Chanel, uh in that territory where I think you can look his way. Uh, but I have concerns about, you know, what happens if he gets re-injured? You know, that is something that we sure. have to take into account as well in his ranking. So solid play if he does play, but also has the potential to disappoint. Yates, congratulations. It's Sunday morning. You have just learned that every single Giants wide receiver is going to be active for the Monday night game. Who are you starting then? Uh, All of them are active? All of them. Every single one of them is active. Uh, Kadarius Toney Mm -hmm. as a low-end wide receiver three. That's it. No Shepard? I would probably still have Toney the highest. Okay. All right, that's fine. I think my guess is I will have Tony and Shepard ranked as wide receiver threes when all is said and done, and then Galladay 
behind that, and then Slayton further down. We've Saquon, done we've done yes. eight. What this is our eighth episode Correct. of this podcast. This that was the my least favorite question that you have posed to me this entire. Oh, wow. Time. That that is a uh, very difficult bar to clear. I did not so like that I question. Reject, and, and if it makes you feel better, I thought your internet dropped because you took so long to answer. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, what do I do? I gotta email our producer. Okay, uh, that's fine. I like it. Uh, Saquon Barkley, uh, we are not sure right mm, now. Things I really are trending don't think up. He plays. No. You don't, right? I don't think he plays. I don't either. But again, we'll find out if we're right at this point. If Barkley does play, you start Saquon Barkley. Yes. Yeah. Yep. If Barkley does not play, do you start Devontae Booker? I've got him as a low-end uh, RB2. I definitely think you can look his way. Okay, and Evan Ingram, I don't know whether or not he's going to play in this game. Uh, if he does, do you want to start him? No, he's a little bit lower than the other guys that I talked about. So I would start Dan Arnold, Pat Fryermuth, uh, CJ Uzama over him. Excellent. I would as well. I have uh, him at 18, so there you go. Did you All see right. the news that just came through? Yeah, what? No, I missed it. Uh, Brian Flores commits to Tua Tunga Vailoa for the remainder of the 2021 NFL season. I did. I think that I'm going to be proven correct in that Deshaun Watson is not going to play in the NFL this year, despite the fact that certain people at our company and that person knows who he is as he listens to this podcast has been telling me you are not taking this into consideration well enough. It's I expect, not me. Look, it's not me. It's not Yates. It's not Yates. No, it's not me. It isn't Yates. But look, this is sort of what we expected. There are just too many things going on in there for this to happen. And again, Tua, I think, deserves the chance, in my opinion, Yates, to start the rest of the season and for them to see what they too. have in him. I, I think this idea that they are drawing conclusions at this point, given what he had last year coming back from the injury, given how little he's played right now, is entirely unfair to the kid. And again, he makes a lot of plays that make you think that there is potential for him to be yep. a guy who you can rely on as your franchise quarterback. So, And and that is good for you know Jalen Waddell, who he's obviously shown a big connection with here going forward. So there you go. Yeah, it's way to end our last podcast for however long. I don't know how long Two it's going to be, man. Two, Two weeks. weeks, man. Okay, well, everybody send out good vibes to Yates and to Jess and to everybody and to Landon and everybody out there just to see exactly uh, you know when we get a new addition to the Yates family, to the Fantasy Pros family, as I like to say. In the meantime, that is it for today's show. Thank you to Air Med Care Network. No matter where you're at in the game of life, Air Med Care Network membership is the protection you should not live without. This is airmedcarenetwork.com forward slash fantasy pros. Use the offer code fantasy pros. Finally, thanks to Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Simplified. Use our promo code GRIDIRON to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Have a wonderful weekend of football, everybody. I will talk to you again on Halloween night with a recap show with me and Pat. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.